Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. In this DCS World video, I'm going to talk about how to set up your VR settings for Oculus Quest 2 in version 2.7 on the open beta. I'll talk about how to set up things like Oculus Tray Tool and then how to tweak the sim actually inside your headset so you get the best performance and the smoothest looking graphics. Now you're not going to get 4K, it's just not going to happen, it's not going to look as good as it would if you were playing on a monitor, that's just the nature of VR I'm afraid until things are optimised. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Now the system I use is uh, an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core processor clocked at 3.8 gig. Um, it's got 32 gigabit of RAM and my graphics card is an RTX 3080. I have done settings or tests on settings on my old 1080 Ti and these similar settings will work fairly well. You might have to tweak one or two little things. So first things first, we're going to download the Oculus Tray Tool. So if you go to uh, apollyonvr.wixsite.com, I will list this in the description or link this in the description below rather, uh, you can see version 8.7.4. All you're going to do is hit download. Once that's done, we're going to come to our actual Oculus Tray Tool. So we'll go for Oculus and then it's installed there. We're going to open it, let it run. So now that the tray tool is open, let me make it a bit bigger so we can see it easy peasy. Now we can see here we've got game settings, tray tool, power option, services and startup, log window, advanced and quest link. Now I use my link cable for the quest because I find, or the quest 2, because I find it a bit more stable. So we're going to click quest link. And it's got a load of presets you can choose, RTX 2070s, 1080s, doesn't really matter because we're going to change it. So I'll just leave it on RTX 2070 plus, obviously I've got a 3080, so this isn't really a factor. Distortion coverture, leave that as low. Encode resolution, put that to 2912. Bit rate of 300. Now you can play around with the bit rate depending on your system and it's going to affect how smooth it's going to look. And it says the recommended super sampling is 1.2. Now I prefer to have 1.3 but what I'm going to do now is hit save on this so this is the link cable settings for the uh, Quest 2. Now game settings itself my super sampling is at 1.3 so pixel is 1.3 and then in game it'll be left at 1 because it's going to take these settings from the Oculus Tray tool. Now your default asynchronous warp mode now you'll see 30 and you'll think 30 hertz that's going to be juddery but remember this is 30 per eye so this is going to be essentially 60 frames a second so you've got off auto adaptive 45 45 30 and 18. Now I'm going to leave as 30 and I'm going to close that there because all my settings are saved. So once we have our Quest 2 headset connected what we're going to do is open up the actual Oculus software and we're going to go to devices. So you can see here it says Quest 2 uh, and skip the big red mark saying it's no microphone detected because they don't use it. So when you've got this page open, so click on devices, click on Quest 2 and touch, then we're going to scroll down to our graphics preferences. Now we can have it up to 120 hertz, 1980. For DCS I found the best is 72 hertz and leave it as render resolution 1. And this is going to give us a stable 36 frames a second per eye in DCS. Now this is with my 3080. Depending on your system, this will adjust slightly. I've tried this in my old system, which I had a 1080 Ti, and it worked an absolute charm. But with the new settings in DCS with 2.7, this is what we're going to go for. So 72 hertz, we're going to click OK. So now that we are connected, our graphics are sorted. I'm going to go back to the Oculus Tray Tool, and I'm going to restart my Quest headset. The tray tool starting up. So I've just got my Quest link. Save and restart service. That's going to start up the Oculus again and then we minimize our tray tool. So now we need to go into the actual Oculus headset and then load up DCS. So now that we've got DCS loaded we need to make sure that it goes to our headset. So we click on settings and we're going to go to the VR tab and we're going to click enable virtual reality headset leave pixel density to 1 because we've already adjusted that in the oculus tray tool now we click on system now I have a custom uh, 
setup for VR for my system. So textures on medium, you can adjust this to high if you want. In fact, let's put it at high. Terrain textures low, civil traffic. I'm going to put that to off. Water to medium. Visibility range is high. Heat blur is off. Shadows medium. Resolution doesn't affect it. Aspect ratio doesn't affect it. Screen doesn't affect it. Resolution of cockpit displays, you can leave that as 512. You can adjust it to 1024 if you like. Now these are the big hitters. MSAA. Now this is going to affect whether or not you're going to have uh, straight lines or if you're going to have jaggy lines on the screen. I prefer to leave mine as MSAA2. You might choose to select it as off and then build it back up from there, but this is going to affect how straight lines look on your screen, either in the cockpit or runway markings, etc. Clouds, I'll drop them down a high, and we'll see how we get on with the new update on 2.7 with the jittery clouds it was fixed today. Anseotropic filtering, uh, ignore, ignore the uh, sliders for a moment. Anseotropic filtering, this is going to affect how things shimmer. So the MSAA affects how the straight lines, if they look jaggy or straight. Anseotropic filtering or anisotropic filtering, uh, that affects the shimmer. Now, I put it on 4, I get not too bad shimmer. It is noticeable sometimes, but it's VR and DCS, it's not optimised. It's the best I've got it so far. Gamma at 2.2, chimney smoke density at 0, preload radius, I've left that at 10,000. Scenery details and forest details are at 1 and 1. Again, you can tweak these sliders depending on your system. Forest visibility at 50, clutter and grass at 750. And I'm going to click OK, and then DCS is going to disappear. That's why it loads up into my actual headset itself. So we'll see here, this is the kind of view that I get when I'm trying to record uh, DCS footage. What I can then do is adjust that in post-processing so I can record uh, nice and full screen. So what I'll do is I'll jump straight into a, an instant action and I'll do it on something fairly meaty. So I'll do it on the... Um, uh, channel map. So let me put my headset on my big face. So here we are in the cockpit of our uh, P47. Uh, we can see already, looking around, it looks pretty nice. Uh, we can see all the um, control panels and gauges and stuff fine. There's no real issues. There's nothing's tearing, nothing's jumping around. And I am recording this with OBS at the same time. I might do it in uh, Shadow Play and see the difference as well. And that's my phone about to go off in my pocket. This is mission to get a feel for the aircraft. So diving the down. There are no threats. Let's adjust our engine a little bit. So we're flying over uh, Dover, off to our left there, and uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of shimmer. Certainly there is for me in a headset, a little bit of shimmer, but I can see everything. And if we bring up our frames per second, we can see there 36 frames a second. Now remember that's left eye, right eye. So we're looking at 72 hertz or 72 frames a second. So let's dive in and we'll see what it looks like as we fly down towards the ground. Nice and smooth. No jarring, no juddering. Almost blacking out there. Rolling in on the town. A little bit of jitter there, but I think that's due to OBS. The clouds aren't jumping so much. So we're flying along, nipping along at a nice little rate here. Everything's passing by as nice and smoothly. Certainly is in the headset and then we'll go vertical. And up we go. Looks fine, roll over. Bit of rudder. So it's nice and smooth in VR. Now what we'll do is we'll jump in something like an F-16 and we'll have a look to see what that feels like. I know what you're thinking, funny looking F-16, aren't you? But what I thought I'd do is check out the wobbly clouds and uh, check out the um, F-18. Uh, as well while I'm here. So we're just going to fly towards the tanker. Uh, we'll speak to him. Where are we? F6. Oh no, that's F5. Helps press the right button. Intensive refuel. Well, they have fixed the clouds. They're not jumping up and down. So those clouds are down surface level. They're still bouncing off in the distance there, but not, not immediately beside me. So we'll fly towards our tanker. And we'll see what the graphics look like up close. Again, I can read the dials easy enough. I can read the um, information on the uh, on the displays fine with these settings. And of course, the HUD is nice and sharp. The aircraft looks a little bit weird. I don't know what they've done with the aircraft, but those shadows look a little bit odd on the aircraft at that range. Was that there? Right, we'll see. We're ready pre contact ready here. Clear contact. 
So again, yep, all the dials are clear. If I bring up our fuel page, um, fuel. Oh, tanker run away from us. Pay attention. Um, yeah, we can see all those perfectly fine. Break away! Break away! Break away! I'm slowing down. Don't worry. Right. So now we've got back up close. Let's slide along. Right. Put a bit of power on. Let them get in front of us. There. Power on now. Take my feet off the rudder pedal so I'm not going mental on them. Been a while since I've done this. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this. Oh, as you can see, up and down, up and down. Let's back off and try that again. See, all the dials are looking fine. I can see everything. I can see the uh, the basket. I can see the aircraft. I can see all my numbers. And I can glance down at the uh, MFDs and I can read them perfectly clear. So let's descend and we'll see how Eagle Dynamics have done with the clouds. Thank you. I'll take my probe back now. There we go. So these clouds, um, from what I remember from this mission, are down at low level. So if we fly down um, to the sea, we'll see how they've done. They're certainly not jumping anywhere near as much as they were in VR. Um, it was really unplayable before in VR. It was like bouncing up and down like this. It was horrible. So we'll go down now. We're still sitting here. Uh, clouds on as well. FPS is at 72. So we are perfectly fine in these VR settings. Flying the F-18, we could probably bump up our pixel density a bit. And that's going to make these uh, MFD dials altitude. a little bit more altitude. clear. Yes, altitude. 4,000 feet, man. Uh, let's bring up our attack radar. So I can still see the numbers. Uh, they're just not as clear as I'd prefer them to be. So we're passing 1,000. It's 900, 800, 700 feet into the clouds. Don't want to go any lower. That's as low as I dare, actually. And that's it. Let's let's go for the gap, and we'll see if it's wobbling. So you used to have the problem when you're on the horizon; they would the clouds would bounce up and down. But now, nothing at all, really. Um, fair play. There's a little bit where it's. It joins onto the coast. There's a little bit of artifacts, a little bit of ghost in there. But certainly here, when you're in them, it's not a factor. So what we'll do in a second is we'll jump out of this and we will try clouds in a different setting. You can see there, the water's at medium and it looks brilliant still in VR. So when you're doing your carrier ops, everything still looks peachy when you're flying around in VR with these settings. So what we'll do is we'll see the clouds um, at higher levels. So let me quit out of that. So here we are in our trusty MiG-21. We'll just trim her up. So looking around, the clouds aren't jumping really unless you look at the horizon way off in the distance. Uh, so what we'll do is build up the speeds. Passing 900, we'll start going up through them. There we go, we're up to a little level there. Oh, that is stunning. Let's give us a little roll. Yeah, they've they've done well with the clouds. They seem to be performing much better. Let's pitch the nose down a little bit. So here we are, mitching about in the MiG-21 above the clouds. There is still some shimmer off in the distance. Now you could probably fix that with some anisotropic filtering or increasing the MSAA, but then that's going to affect your frames per second. So for me, it's much better to have it a little bit smoother and uh, less jumpy. And yeah, this is cracking. Yep, well done Eagle Dynamics. So that was the adjusted settings for DCS World 2.7 uh, with VR and the Oculus Quest 2, obviously adjusted with the new wibbly wobbly cloud fix. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, a little click on the button from you is going to help this channel to grow massively and then we'll get more stuff for you guys to make it amazing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great time. Until next time, Tactical Pascal, out! I wish I didn't have that big red spot in my nose. Ugh.